What is going on, players? And welcome to the end of season review in the director of football, Journeyman. It's the end of our first, I suppose, half season with uh, Ghent. I almost said Durag. Not there anymore. We've left now. Um, so we've spent a little bit of time at the club. It's been about half a season. I think we came in early-ish January, I think. When did we? I went to Milestones. We, yeah, we came in the 31st of December. So we've been here almost six months. Um, so this is the season review. Um, we're going to do a little bit of transfers. And then we have the Europa Conference League qual third qualifier, I think it is. Um, that's not going to be for a little bit. We're going to go through the um, end of season awards. If this is your first time here... Fantastic time to arrive because it is, we're not too far into our time with Ghent. This is episode 7, I think. So yeah, um, we're having a look here and two players have been inducted in to the overall best 11. So we've only been here for a short period of time so none of these players are players we brought to the club. Well, I don't bring any players to the club, but none of these players have arrived since... I arrived, but some of them are going to be leaving. Um, like Kaminsky, he is leaving. Well, he wants to leave. Petretta is leaving. Boban is uh, still one of our players. Timchik is still here. Bron, I don't know Dylan Bron. He's playing for Braga in Portugal. But this season was scuffed. Portugal didn't didn't play football this year for some reason. And he's not played a whole lot last, or the season just finished. What about Lech Poznan? Interesting. Uh, Deval is still with us. Vestrade is still with us. David, Jonathan David, Canadian, who Benfica signed off us, and then PSG signed off them for substantial sum of money. So we made a good bit of money off him, to be fair. Uh, Yarmachuk, playing for Ajax now. Spent a long time with us. Before we went on loan to Ferenc Kavassi. So I probably played against him when I was managing the rug. I never realised that a Ghent player was on loan with a rival. Uh, Lega on the left is at Leon. He was here on loan. He had multiple loans with us. And he was pretty good in the last of them. And it helped him break into the Leon team. Well done. And Diallo, who we all know. Because he is... The best striker at the club. Um, on the substitute bench, we have Kusmans, who's he spent. He didn't spend actually didn't spend that long here. Uh, didn't play a whole lot of games. He had that one season where he played thirty six. Other than that, mm. um, retired player Sergio, who was just inducted. Uwusu, who is playing for Tenerife. Again, player spent a long time here, and they made profit off him. Pretty good. Um, Yax. Yax. Jax. Who's only wanted by Atletico Madrid now. That's good. We might get to keep him for the for next season. Uh, he was inducted as well. Vele... What's his name? Vele Bahai. Bahai? Bahai! He played on loan for us for two seasons. And he was at standard Liège last season. Bastard. And so he was, he was decent when he was here. And Laurent Deporte, formerly of Huddersfield, came back to us and played 30, scored 15 before he went to South Korea. Interesting. He hasn't had a managerial job since he quit three years ago. It's interesting. So two players, like I said, Sergio and Yannick Yax. Why, do, why am I saying his name differently now? Uh, Jax Jacques. Um, were inducted Nobody. we've already gone through that uh, Diallo obviously had to be player of the season he was unbelievable this season Zagorva with 10% and Everart with 9 yeah, to be fair, yeah, I can kind of see that goal of the season was Zagorva against Cairoli in February I 
feel like you would have seen that game. We'll have a look at it anyway. Young player of the season was Diallo. So that's the last time he can win that award now because he is 24. For some reason, that's still counted as being a young player. Yeah, this is definitely one you would have pretty sure you saw this one. I'm pretty sure this was in one of the videos that came out earlier this week. Is it ever going to open? Is it? Okay. So Gorva. Oh, this is the one where he runs from just inside our half to the edge of their box and boshes it in. I think we scored better goals, but fair enough. Uh, team of the season, Sanyak in goal. Pretty much played every game, bar one, since we joined. Timchik and Petrella, Petretta on the left. As I said, Petretta is leaving for Legia Warsaw. In July. Um, Everett and Sergio as our centre backs. Boban and Pavlov as our centre midfielders. Interesting Pavlov makes it in. Having only been playing since the end of January. Uh, Deckers and Zagorva as the wide men. Jacks behind Diallo. Interesting. Fair enough. I can kind of see that. I'm not. Deckers probably from his. T before we arrived. Got a lot of game time. Other than that, I suppose Petretta was in and out of the team. Um, but they reckon this is going down as a golden generation, a true golden generation. To be fair, a lot of players came through our youth system that played for us this season. Um, Diallo was the top goal scorer and the highest average rating, 7.26. Most assists for Zagorva with 10. The goalkeeper had the best pass completion at 85%. We do play out of the, from the back. That makes sense. Uh, most player of the matches went to Diallo with 7. And part of the ball boy club, we had Boban with 12 yellow cards. I would have expected him to have more, seeing as how he's a ball winning midfielder. He had one red card along with Verstrate. Um, season review. Expected to fight at the top end of this, the league. And we did struggle to find their best form at times. It was pretty much when we uh, got into the league championship group thing that's when we started hitting dodgy form um, we've already looked at that club seasons or club vision and expectations for the next five years they want us to play entertaining football which is, you know we do uh, work within the wage budget which the director of football is in charge of but okay finish in the top six reach the first knockout round so we have to get through one qualifying round I think it is and then a group stage to get in there. The season after, they want us to win the league. And then continue to win the league. And then win silverware. So they want us to win the league twice and then win silverware. Along with winning the league. And then win the league again. I think what they want us to do is win the cup. I'll accept that. That's, that's fine. Um, we're finally into a positive for managerial support. The dressing room atmosphere is fantastic. As you would expect, Negrea is just back from his um, damaged Achilles tendons, which I can't imagine was a, was a fun time for him. That sounds painful. Uh, the lads are off on their summer holidays until the 5th of July, which is, which is nice. Um, I don't think I'm going to be in this list. I am not. Who are the best win ratio? Club Rouge, Ronnie Delia. Hmm. Well, I think we, we give it to... Uh, Standard Liège's manager. Yeah, I think the Standard Liège manager deserves it. Then Ronnie Del, the Del, Del Delia. Oh, god damn it! Click, pick the wrong manager. And then no, we need to swap you two around. Yeah, and Belgian manager of the year. Oh, Belgian manager of the year. All right. Wait, what? Huh? <laughs> I'm confused. Weren't we just... What? Okay. All right. Okay. What did we just vote on? Belgian manager... Oh, manager of the season. Okay. I don't know how 
Uh, okay. So, um, like I said, we will be back for the knockout round, the third qualifying knockout round game thing against whoever we're playing. We might do the draw as well. Um, we might be back for the draw and then to find out who we're playing and then maybe do either both legs or one leg, like the second leg maybe because I think last season it was like a 36 minute video. That's far too long. Plus the fact that we still haven't, we still won't have done an actual like transfer roundup. So we will be back in just a second for that. Don't go anywhere. As you can see, we have a uh, Euro qualifiers coming up. We're playing against Romania. It's going to be interesting. See you guys in just a second. For All right, fellas, we're back now for um, not our first game. We did play the first leg of our Europa Conference League best place third qualifying round. Um, and we've played two league games. Um, I did realize after recording the first part that I never put my glasses on. So sneak peek for anybody who hasn't seen me without my glasses. That's what I look like. Um, <clears throat> Pretty much the exact same, just... Uh, we beat Stumgratz 2-1 in the first leg, as you can see. Um, Darog also have made it into the next round, which is interesting. You know, we could, there's an opportunity for us to play them at some point. Um, if they can get through the next round as well, because our group has, or I think the team we're playing in the next round is already drawn. Um, I was, like I said, intending on bringing you back to show you the draw, but I kind of skipped past it because I wasn't paying attention. Um, we're going to have a quick look at the results we've had and then we're going to talk about players that have come in. So first game of the season was against Beershot in the league. We won 3-0. Bamba, um, Sade, Sadgi. Yeah, Bamba, Sagad, Sadigi uh, scored. Maybe wondering, who is that? He's a new, He's a new signing. And he scored on his debut. Came off the... No, he started. Yeah, he started. Uh, then we beat Stumgratz in the first leg of this game away. 2-1. Uh, we were supposed to be the um, outsiders. And we managed to do quite well to get a win. We did pick up an injury quite early in that game. Which obviously not ideal. Um, and Westerlo in the last game. Mike De Ritter, the Rooter, came on and scored an equaliser. We... Just could not score a goal against them. We were way better than them. We just really struggled. Um, <clears throat> Signing-wise, we have this guy here, Vincent Mitkov. He's Argentinian. Sounds more Bulgarian, but Argentinian right back. Yeah, Argentinian right back. Um, looks decent. Never played a, an actual league game for Baca, but he has... Like, look at those physicals for a right back. And he's got 20 determination, 17 bravery. The, he's just, he's going to be fantastic. He's joining us for four, a potential 4.6 million um, in January. So we don't have to wait too long for him to arrive. But then the ins and outs, it's been, it's been chaos. It's been utter chaos. The director of football signed five players on pre-contracts from an array of different clubs. We have Hamid Junior Doso who is a centre-back, who, because they played him at left-back once, is now a makeshift left-back. Um, Ivorian International, fantastic tackling, amazingly brave, quite good aggression, very good at marking decisions, anticipation. The guy is a good all-rounder. Um, snapped him up on a free from the Ivory Coast, where he has played quite well for the last five years. Yeah, five years he's done... He's been a first team-ish, more or less regular. Um, he is he's a good player. He's came in and he's played twice already. Once at left back, as I said. Um, and once as an actual centre back. Both times have been off the bench though. So he hasn't quite broken into the first team just yet. Then we signed Andre Sacramento from Porto's second team. And he is Portuguese under 21 international. Fantastic dribbling, fantastic finishing. He's quite good at heading. Uh, average jumping reach, but his agility, balance, and bravery is all really good as well. This guy's only 22, so there's still a chance for him to to increase his potential. He's not going to get much better than he is, but it's another striker. It's handy. He's handy to have because last season we had two strikers 
This year we have more than two strikers. Um, another player to come in is Hector from Barcelona's B team. He's, he's fine. I don't think he's going to pull up any treats. If the director of football brought him in as an important player. Don't think so. His determination is really good. His reflexes are really good. And his kicking is quite good. There's nothing really bad about him. Like as a sweeper keeper, everything is decent. Um, maybe his passing and his acceleration aren't great. Vision's not amazing either. But other than that, he's fine. The Sanyak is going to be a starting goalkeeper regardless of... What happens? The only way he's going to play any games is going to be a Sanyak picks up an injury. And if this guy doesn't get a chance. This is Arno Dreysen, who is a Gink graduate who went to Inter Milan, played once, then went on loan for a couple of seasons, and just never got a game. The direct football decided to bring him in. He's relatively similar to um, Hector, but his attributes are better in different ways. He's six foot four. He's got fantastic jumping reach, balance, bravery, and reflexes. So he's quite a good keeper to have. Um, you know, composures of seven is not amazing, but he's only 20. Not played a whole lot of games in his career. And he is on, I've put him on the, yeah, I've put him on the development development list to try and get him sent out on loan to try and get a bit of uh, football into him. Because I think he could be a really good player. Um, then we signed North Korean slash Japanese striker, striker um, Han Chol Un, who can't really finish or pass the ball. He's not great off the ball. His anticipation is terrible. His decision making is not great. Composure isn't great, but his acceleration and his stamina are f- oh. His first touch is 15, so he's like the anti Lukaku. Um, spend a bit of time playing in North Korea. Had a couple of good seasons. Still, the current. North Korean league season. He was tearing it up. Um, very interesting. I'm surprised he came in. I don't know who he is. I didn't even know that there was that much. I, just, I didn't think of North Korea as a, a place to pick up players. But he's North Korean and Japanese. He's currently in the North Korean under-21s. So there's a chance that he get, comes good. Don't know if he's going to come good here. He's he's played. He's already played a game, and I'm not so sure. Um <laughs> Then we signed Bub- Bubanj from current Russian uh, league champions Krasnodar, and it's he looks quite good. Like his technique, aggression, flair, teamwork, vision, work rate, agility, and pace all above 16. 16 or 17 is very nice indeed. And, uh, it's uh, no, I don't want to this i still think jacks starts ahead of him for a couple of reasons he's jacks is our player and he's younger than bubanj but bubanj perfectly acceptable backup player so we'll use him if we need to use him then tiago rodriguez another striker it's as if the director of football went what did we not have last year let's just buy Lots and lots and lots of them. So he is a set piece specialist, quite good finishing. Physically, he's quite good. Five foot ten, so his jumping reach isn't great, but his heading is 17. So if he can jump high enough, he'll bosh them in all day long. Concentration isn't great on him either. His positioning isn't isn't ideal. Tackling a four he is a striker. So we just won't be playing him as like a false nine. Or deep line forward where he kind of is expected to go back. He's not going to be a support striker, basically. Um, we have trade sending him out on loan. Well, I've put him, him on the loan list as well. I do have a couple of players that the director of football has brought in that I would like to send out on loan. Because we're overrun in, in goalkeepers and striker now. Whereas last year we didn't really have strikers. Um, he's also gone and signed Babak Saji. As you will have seen, he scored in one of the games already. He is a very good prospect, an Iranian international with fantastic technique, technique and vision. His acceleration, balance, and pace is oh, very good. Finishing only of only four could be better, but 
eh, it's fine. He's he looks a decent player. Dribbling isn't great for a midfielder, but we'll see what happens. He came from Benfica, never actually played for Benfica, so he's not. Um, he's not. They're not going to. They're not going to miss him too much. I would imagine. Then the director of football decided left back was an area we needed fixing, so he brought in Real Madrid left back uh, Jean, who is an ex under. 20 international I'm guessing he's not under 20 international anymore he might be um, he's fine physically quite good mental average I'd say There's a couple of good stats in there uh, technically he's not going to be first choice um, Van, Van der Broek is probably ahead of him in the pecking order but Roberto also came in signed him from Atletico Madrid he looks kind of a better all rounder. Again, physically he's quite good. Jumping reach isn't great, but he's five foot eleven, taller than most left backs I've had in the past. And mentally he looks average or better. Uh, technically, again, a bit of a struggle bus. There's a lot of sm low numbers in there, but where it counts, marking, passing, tackling, technique, in ta te uh, technical, they're grand. Um, the only thing he really lacks is his crossing ability and you can teach that to players you can teach someone to cross the ball he's out injured though he's the one that picked up the injury in the Stumgat game in the first leg uh, so he's going to be out for a wee little while on the outs we've had a couple of players leave Vistrate left for Trapsan Sport he was a midfielder we didn't really need or want well we, need, we needed didn't want uh, Tony Devild is gone to De Grafskap don't really care uh, Petretta is one of the left backs. We managed to make 4.8 million off him. That was. Oh. Um, Alderete went to Braga for 2.5 million. I didn't like him. I didn't really want to use him. He's old. We made 2.5 million on him. Happy days. Uh, Kaminsky went to Royal Antwerp for 68,000. Would have liked a bit more money from him, but to direct football accepts all offers. Um, Stolaski, who is a Polish international. Yeah, Polish international has gone to Mexico to play for Pumas. Um, it's not really a player I was overly bothered by. Any other players that are worth noting? Uh, Devalle went to Nordsland, so that's an interesting one. He wasn't really going to get any games, so 750k is fine. He was, I think he was valued at 1.5 million, so half his value. It's fine. And Zagorova, through a hissy fit, wanted to leave. Uh, we transfer listed him. Nobody wanted to buy him. So he's gone out on loan to Bursa Sport for 1.2 million for the year. Plus, I think they're paying his wages. Yeah, they're paying his wages. So we're we're making money off him, which is delightful. Um, I actually haven't picked my team. Oh, very interesting. All right, so Sanyak in goal. Tumchik on the right. He played really well in the first couple of games. Uh, Van den Broek is going to start on the left. Centre-back, we're going to have Everett. And... Yeah, we start with Sergio. Mazella, we are going to play Shagidi. No, not Shagidi. So, yeah, we're just going to call him whatever comes out of my mouth. Uh, alongside Boban. Jax is going to start in the attacking midfield position. Decker's on the right. Uh, Bamba on the left because he's been quite good thus far. And I think we start with Diallo up front because he's been in good form. <clears throat> um, who... Yeah, like we have a lot of strikers now, which is the opposite problem to what we had last year, where we were lacking players in pretty much every actually, in every position. We were lacking um, strength and depth bar centre back. But this year, our biggest issue is probably right back. So that's you know it's nice it's nice to have different issues every year depending on what the director of football does there's still about three weeks left at the transfer window this is going to be a very long episode actually um good thing i'm not doing a double um two games because we'd be here for days i'm going to tell them to not be complacent uh tim chick is stressed but i've managed to fix that uh but yeah like i said next uh, next Round has been drawn. We're definitely not going to be playing Drog, which I would enjoy profusely to be able to play Drog at some point. 
Um, it's not going to be in the next um, the next round because we drew A A B or someone else. Who did we draw? It was A A B or. Um, Vitesse so we're going to be playing either a Danish side or a Dutch side I'm more than happy to take that Cork City are after making it this far as well Derry were actually in here as well for any oh we scored Decker's with the goal um, I was too busy talking about the Europa Conference League so we didn't actually see this we're going to watch the highlight Jack's with the assists, puts it out to Deckers. Deckers cuts inside. Ooh, tasty. Um, you may have noticed as well, my voice is a little um, different. I'm suffering a little bit with like a sore throat, I think. Um, or the start of it, maybe. Maybe I have coronavirus. Who knows? But <clears throat> it's been a, a little, you know what I mean? So I'm trying to... Just, you know, this episode has probably been the hardest one to record because of the amount of talking I've had to do. Normally there's like in-between bits where I get like quiet and calm, but not today, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, like I said, the transfers that we've made so far have been quite good. We've made a little bit of money because of a lot of the players that have come in were all on uh, pre-contracts or just on freeze in general. So it's not been too bad. Plus we're making money off some of the players that are out on loan. Um, yeah, I'm going to save far from please because we're not really doing a whole lot at the minute. I'm going to try and get Diallo, who is favourite to be the top scorer in the league this year. I suppose he has done it for the last two years, I think. I think he's been top scorer for the last two years. I suppose it would be expected of him. There's still an awful lot of, of clubs looking at uh, Jax and Diallo. They've had an awful lot of interest in them. Um, Sanyak was off playing for Algeria's, in, or sorry, for Algeria in the African Cup of Nations, and they lost in the final. Which is, you know, imagine getting so close but then falling. Oh no! I've had Sacramento on the bench every single game. Of late, and the one time we don't put him on the bench is the one time our left winger picks up an injury. Mm. I don't know what to do now. Actually, right. Okay. How about or or you go here? No. Okay. Make you a ball playing defender on cover. Bring on Doso. Leave you doing that because that's what you're good at. Then we bring on De Reuter for Bamba. Now look. Oh, you've made a formation. We've made it work, sort of, more or less, probably. Hopefully, I hope. They're not going to score that many goals in t eight minutes plus stoppages. Um, I did kind of forget to make substitutions. They've gotten through with Sanyak's not, not having it. No, 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 no. Sanyak doesn't, doesn't do that. Dosso sends it on. Everett to De Reuter. Everett. Jacks, not a <clears throat> that wasn't a great pass slash cross, so it's not. We're not gonna we're not gonna put up with that. Pavlov is oh Pavlov is still here on loan. Um, the director of football brought him back in, so we have a nice amount of midfielders now. Whereas um, last season we definitely didn't. We had a but we we had a selection of midfielders. None of them were very good. So it was uh, less than ideal having to rotate midfielders because we're still playing a centre-back in central midfield. 
Offside. Okay. What? In the situation, do you not think that they would have gone to get the ball and run to the center circle because they were guaranteed to get knocked out otherwise? I'm going to say it was a nice victory. We may not have done the best job, but we still came out with the win. And I'm somewhat fearful that oh, the English window will be closed now, though. But not all of Europe. Mm. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still afraid that um, Jack's Diallo, Sanyak, any one of the kind of Boban, any one of the major players, I feel like they're they're still up for grabs by a lot of the uh, the bigger European clubs. And there's a lot of like PSG have been mentioned, but Jacks or for Jacks a couple of times recently. I, just, I don't really don't really want to lose them. Like we are oh, Vitesse won their game. We are. Um, in a situation where I don't think the board would accept an offer necessarily because we have 10 million in the bank now but I'm still still a little weary because like Everett is wanted by Chelsea and Liverpool Jax is wanted by Anderlecht, Genk, Chelsea and Liverpool the Grace is wanted by Inter Milan see like we've you know, no major teams looking at you no major teams looking at you um, Arno Dreisen I offered him out on loan. Man United came back and said they couldn't afford his wages. So. How could Man United not afford his wages? Why would Man United tell us they can't afford his wages? It was it was interesting. But yeah. We will be back in the next episode for probably a double header for Tess. We shall see. Um, we haven't managed to get past Strum, Stumgratz. Next the next round is going to be getting into the group stage, which would be delightful. Who are the rock playing? Ah, they should walk past um, Craiova. So, like I said, next episode, we will be playing against Vitesse. Did Cork City make it through? Irish flags, no Irish flags, no, no Irish flags. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for watching, fellas, and I will see you. Oh, no. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and all that. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!